teaching mein, unki priority mein, dekha jato, he is already a sannyasi, but yes, very soon we will also see that formally he, is, uh, he becomes a sannyasi as well. And a glorious disciple of His Holiness Gopal Krishna Maharaj, very effectively preaching um, all across the globe. Or uh, Sati Prabhuji is centered on uh, Sri Radha Gedari Temple, Mahase Prabhuji hai, or uh, Mira Road, it's called Mira Road basically. So Prabhuji hai par bhakti bhai padane ke liye aaye the toh, fir bhakto ne request ki Prabhuji se ki Prabhuji agar hari katha ke liye agar mandiron mein agar aa sake toh, so Prabhuji kindly agreed. So humne fir bhiksha mangi ki agar twelfth ko Prabhuji haan aa sake. So Prabhuji ne aana swikar kiya, so hum uh, Prabhuji bhot hi uh, abhar vet karna chahenge Prabhuji ka. So I will give Prabhuji ka hi gaur se swagat kare by chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. As we come along, Prabhuji ki jai, Jagat Guru Sri Lal Prabhupada ki jai. Thank you, Prabhuji. Jai Radha Madhava. Kunjavihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjavihari Jaya Gopi Jana Vallabha Girivara Dhari Jaya Gopi Jana Vallabha Girivara Dhari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Vihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Vihari Jaya Gopi Jana Vallabha Girivara Dhari Keshoda Randana Prajajana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Vrajajana Ranjana Yamona Tira Vanachari Yamona Tira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Vihari Jaya Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Vihari Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna Krishna, Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama Rama, Rama, Hare 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 
हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram. राम राम हरे 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 कृष्णा नित्ताय गौरा हरि बोल हरि बोल Hari Bol, Hari Bol, Nittai Gaura. Jaya Jaya Prabhupad, 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 Jaya Jaya. Shravapad ki jai Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Chaiva Narottamam Devim Saraswati Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudiraye Nasha Praesha Vadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishikim Srimad Bhagavatam Skandati Nadhyay Pachis Shlok Sankhya Satra Tada Purushaha Atmanam Kevalam Prakrite Param Nirantaram Swayam Jyotihi Animanam Akhanditam Tada Purusha Atmanam Tada Purusha Atmanam Kevalam Prakrite Param Kevalam Prakrite Param Nirantaram Swayam Jyotir Nirantaram Swayam Jyotir 
ಅನಿಮಾನಂಖಂಡಿತಂಖಂಡಿತಂಖಂಡಿತಂಖಂಡಿತಂಖಂಡಿತಂಖಂಡಿತಂಖಂಡಿತಂಖಂಡಿತ
जब तक परम आत्मा परमात्मा विद्यमान रहता है तब तक उसका अंश भी विद्यमान रहता है जब तक सूर्य का अस्तित्व है तब तक सूर्य किरणों के अणु भी विद्यमान रहेंगे वैदिक साहित्य में जीव कण को बाल के अग्रभाग के दस हजारवें भाग के आकार का बताया गया है अतः यह अति सूक्ष्म है परमात्मा अनंत है किंतु जीव या जीवात्मा सूक्ष्म है यद्यपि गुण में यह परमात्मा से भिन्न नहीं है भिन्न नहीं है इस श्लोक में दो शब्द ध्यान देने योग्य हैं। एक है निरंतरम जिसका अर्थ अभिन्न अथवा उसी गुण वाला जीव को यहाँ पर अणिमाणम भी कहा गया है अणिमाणम का अर्थ है अति सूक्ष्म परमात्मा सर्वव्यापी हैं किंतु जीव अति लघु आत्मा है अखंडितम का अर्थ वस्तुतः खंडित नहीं अभी तो स्वयं स्वाभाविक रूप से सदैव अति सूक्ष्म है सूर्य के सूर्य से सूर्य प्रकाश के अनु अनुवीय खंडों कन, को कोई भी विलग नहीं कर सकता किंतु सूर्य प्रकाश का अनुवीय खंड सूर्य जैसा व्यापक नहीं होता इसी प्रकार जीवात्मा अपनी स्वाभाविक स्थिति के द्वारा गुणात्मक रूप से परमात्मा के समान ही है किंतु अत्यंत सूक्ष्म है ओम ज्ञान मीरांद से ज्ञानांजन शलाकय चक्षुरोन्मील येन तस्म श्रीगरव नम श्री चैतन्य मनोभीष्ट स्थापित येन भूतले स्वयं रूप कदा मह्यम ददा स्वादाक वंदेहम श्रीगुर श्रीयुत पदकमल श्रीगुरन्वैष्णवांश श्री साग्रजात सह गण रघुनाथ तम सजीव साध्वैत सवदूत पिजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्यदेव श्रीराधाकृष्णपादगणलिता शिविशाकान्ता हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधो दीनबंधो जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिका कांतराधाका नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरंगिराधे वृंदवनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरिप्रि वाचाकलतरूभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैश्यवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीअद्वैतगाधर श्रीवासादिगौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण कौन सी भाषा में चाहिए हिंदी अंग्रेजी हिंदी इंग्लिश ओके ओके इंग्लिश हिंदी बुक रखा है इसलिए मैंने हिंदी में पढ़ा सो द करंट चैप्टर विच इज गोइंग ऑन इज कपिला देव युति संवाद कपिला टीचिंग हैज जस्ट स्टार्टेड इन द एंटायर भागवतम इफ यू वॉन्ट टू नो द भागवत फिलोसफी वेरी क्लियरली स्पष्ट एंड ऑल्सो द डिफरेंट कैटेगरीज ऑफ भक्ति वॉट इज ज्ञान वॉट इज योग एवरी थिंग एट वन प्लेस वेरी क्रिस्टल क्लियर इंक्लूडिंग क्रिएशन वॉट इट इज हाउ इट इज दैट इज दिस कपिल देव युति संवाद दीज चैप्टर्स रेंजिंग फ्रॉम ट्वेंटी फाइव टू थर्टी थ्री they are like 
the most important section of Bhagavatam when it comes to understanding and having a clarity of the philosophy of Krishna consciousness. Kapila, he explains to Devyuti, uh, starting from this chapter, and then he goes on describing so many varieties of yoga and uh, so many varieties of uh, bhakti yoga and also describes the pure devotional service. Even within the pure devotional service, he talks about sadhana bhakti. In that also, the vaidhi sadhana, then also he talks about raganuga. Then he talks about bhava bhakti, prema bhakti. And uh, whenever there is a quotation to be given about pure devotional service, Srila Rupa Goswami in Bhakti Rasamana Sindhu has quoted many verses which are spoken by Lord Kapila to Devyuti. That means in establishing Siddhanta, if you don't quote Kapila's teachings to Devyuti, that means you are actually not given any proper conclusion, you are not given any clarity. So that is why this section is very important to clarify many philosophical aspects. So Kapila just now starts speaking, especially he starts speaking from text number 13 onwards. He says to Kapila Devyuti when she asks many questions about jnana, yoga and bhakti, and she says, Nirvinna, I'm, I'm not completely frustrated now. Please explain to me everything what I've asked. Then immediately the Lord says that I am, my, my opinion is everybody has to just perform bhakti yoga, nothing else. Yoga ha adhyatmika pumsam, that's all. Yoga ha adhyatmika pumsam means that yoga which is referring to the soul, adhyatmika ha, that is my opinion, personal opinion. And that yoga is the thing which actually uproots all kinds of miseries. And also it gives all kinds of happiness. Dukkhasya cha sukhasya cha. Yatra dukkhasya. Dukkhasya cha sukhasya cha. It gives all kinds of happiness. All kinds of miseries are uprooted. In other words, if you want to say another way, all the karmas which gives us different kinds of happiness and distress, karmas are totally destroyed. But since you asked that uh, I have to speak something about the other parts of yoga, that is Jnana Yoga, Jnana Vairagya and uh, also the Ashtanga Yoga, I am going to give you a, in a nutshell what is that process. So Kapila in three verses he talks about Jnana and Vairagya which are the result of yoga. Yoga means the Ashtanga Yoga. Now, the result of Ashtanga Yoga is realization of Paramatma, realization of uh, the soul or the Atma. Atma, Paramatma, realization, that is the result of Yoga. Of course, relishing the past sense of Krishna is not the result of Yoga. So that is why in these three verses, that is 16, 17 and 18, you will find Paramatma Tattva and Atma Tattva being explained in a nutshell. So when somebody, he controls the mind, what is the nature of the mind? The nature of the mind is causing bondage and the name, same mind causes liberation. Like in the Upanishads is when described that Manaye uh, Vanushyanam Karanam Manda Mokshayo and Vanshyan Sange, Mokshaya, Nirvishyan, Manaha. Now, the mind is the cause of bondage, mind is the cause of liberation. Manayeva Manushyanam, Karanam, Manda, Mokshayo. Mind is the cause of liberation as well as mind is the cause of bondage. Karanam, Banda, Mokshayo. Bandayan, Vishyan, Sango. When the mind is attached to matter, then it is called bondage. When the mind is uh, nirvishayan manaha, when the mind is beyond the vishayas, when you withdraw the mind from sense objects, that is called liberation. So in a very simple way that has been described, guneshu saktam bandaha ratam va pumsi muktaye. So Kapila, he explains the same thing in a different way. Says that guneshu saktam bandaha, when the mind atmanaha matam, mukhyate atmanaha matam, chatmano matam, 
my opinion is when that mind which is referred here as atma atmanaha when it is guneshu saktam when it is uh, attached to the modes of nature then that is a state of bondage at the same time ratam va pumsi when the mind is attached to krishna pumsi means he is krishna then that is the cause of liberation that is mukti so now mind has been described what is the position of the mind so bondage is not because of the mind liberation is not because of the mind mind's attachment when the mind is attached to krishna that is liberation mind is attached to matter that is bondage so the whole purpose of yoga is to remove withdraw the mind from vishayan sangaha from uh, vishayas and put it in krishna that is the whole purpose of yoga so when somebody is practicing this yoga what are the first symptoms which are experienced uh, first symptoms that is aham mama abhimano unmattaihi aham mama mana abhimattaihi abhimatta mano taihi this is all aham aham means i i am somebody and uh, mama mama means mine i and mine aham mama iti agyanah if somebody ask you what is ignorance just two words that's all aham mama <laughs> this aham mama as long as this, these two concepts are there that i am and somebody mai kuch hu even to think that i am a man i am having so many designations upadis and uh, mama this is mine these are the two agnanas gyana means ignorance now when you are attached to work that is called aham when you are attached to the result of work it is called mama so attachment is always at two levels work and result of work so in these two aham and mama what is more superior is aham i so when you think i am the in charge of this house then you think this is my house isn't it so even in aham and mama aham is more dangerous everything starts with aham that is why ahankara so this is where the whole chapter of kapil bhuyut samvad starts 26 chapter the 26 chapter which is talking about uh, uh, the gyana mishra bhakti which is talking about the elements if you see the 26 chapter how does it start what is the purpose of this 26 chapter where kapila and is explaining to devyuti it is very simple he says athate sampravakshami tatvanam lakshanam pratak yad viditva vimucheta purusha prakritir gunaihi one becomes liberated purusha prakritir gunaihi then gyanam nishre sarthaya purusha syatmanah darshanam yadahur varnyate tatte hridaya granti bhedanam what is the whole purpose of this hridaya granti bhedanam that is hridaya granti means aham i am somebody i am so and so i am this like prakriti kriyamanani gunai mani sarvashah ahankara vidhu vimudatma karta aham iti manyate i am ahankara i am the karta iti manyate vimudatma and krishna uses a very special word here vimudatma what is the meaning of vimudatma special fool vishe vishesha rupena mooda vi mooda vi means vishesha there are many fools ordinary fools but there are some special fools who think that i am so and so it is very dangerous this aham mama concept is very dangerous especially aham in this aham the external feature of aham is mama and this mama seems to be very nice like when somebody comes and tells you that you are my friend you are my friend you feel very nice isn't it 
somebody comes and tells you your son tells oh you're my mother mere papa mera beta so this aham which is such a cruel aspect in our consciousness when it comes externally it ma manifests externally it takes a very beautiful form called love isn't it it's very very beautiful form called love so he loves me so much you know he's my my husband my wife my child uh, he loves me he always calls me my dear <laughs> but actually it's a it's cheating inside what is this? is aham uh, like a son he uh, when i am a young boy he gets 95% or 98% in the examination the father is so happy and he loves my son my dear son you did great job 98% and he goes and tells everyone you know my son <laughs> if he had if he had been somebody's son he would have failed because he is my son na <laughs> so this is how uh, the hum and mama uh, the people are completely bewildered with this mama mamatva mamakar but actually behind this mamakar there is a devil called ahankar and it is not seen we don't see that if you see the devil of ahankar be, be behind this mamakar then i am telling you you will not even wear coping and go to the forest <laughs> you will not stay in anybody's house anywhere just run get out <laughs> that's how it is so that is how krishna he introduces the entire bhagavad gita by the trashtra vacha dharma kshetre kurukshetre samaveta utsavah mamaka pandavas chaiva kimakurvata sanjaya so if you read this verse you'll find bichara dhritarashtra you know he loves his son so much he loves his son so much that is why he's out of fear of his sons losing the war he is asking sanjaya please oh sanjaya please tell me ha uh, what is happening to my sons which are they are in the battlefield ha uh, are they winning or losing their my son mamaka ha uh, and those pandavas ha <laughs> uh, they are they are hope my my sons are not killed by them uh, that is what people think so this is what dhritarashtra is has in his heart love for his devotees or love for his sons of course his devotees sons were devotee only <laughs> his devotee <laughs> so then uh, sanjay understands what is happening in the heart of dhritarashtra he says don't worry because if you analyze this words dhritarashtra is telling that <clears throat> dharma kshetre kurukshetre and he knows very well kurukshetra is what and he knows why that kurukshetra is dharma kshetra he knows very well because krishna is there and uh, dhritarashtra knew very well that kurukshetra has become dharma kshetra because of presence of krishna and he knew very well krishna is supreme lord number 2 dhritarashtra knew very well his sons who are mamaka is saying my sons they are on the side of what adharma and uh, kurukshetra is what and who is going to be victorious and dhritarashtra knew very well his sons are going to die he knew this but still is asking kimakurvata what did they do he knew very well they went there for what fight like for example if i say that uh, uh, this devotee is very hungry not eaten for two days and nice wonderful plate of prasad is said maha prasad is in front of him and he sat in front of the plate in front of the place to eat what did he do strange question ha ah, he is hungry for two days my nice mahaprasad is in front of me he sat in front of it to eat hey what did he do <laughs> the rashtra is telling my sons and pandavas they have assembled in kurukshetra yutsava for fighting what did he do because the rashtra was very much afraid 
what was the fear of the trashra that by the influence of dharma kshetra maybe his sons pand his sons kauravas the trashra in party they would have got influenced by dharma kshetra and become dharmikas and they would stop fighting they would not fight they would compromise that was the fear kai dharma kshetra ke prabhav mein aake mere putra dharmik na ban jaye ye dar tha the same when few young boys come to a temple their parents have fear you know that fear what is the fear kai brahmachari na ban jaye ha but the same brahmachari they come and pay obeisances ne mera bachcha nahi hona chahiye us that was the fear so dhritarashtra had this fear uh, that my sons should not compromise being influenced by dharma kshetra now somebody may say that dhritarashtra had great love for his sons if dhritarashtra had great love for his sons and he knew very well his sons are going to die in the battlefield of kurukshetra what he should have told don't find mat jao beta aa jao mar jaoge but still he wanted his sons to fight why he wanted to be in the kingship i want to be the king i aham and for that aham you use what mama now you say you are mine ha huh? tum mere mama ho tum mere chacha ho tum tum mere mitra ho tum mere friend ho हाँ तुम मेरे हो बट एक्चुअली तुम मेरे मामा नहीं तुम मेरे चाचा नहीं तुम मेरे काम के हो बस ऑल दिस अफेक्शन यूजलेस तुम मेरे काम के हो बस <laughs> इससे तुम मेरी पत्नी हो पत्नी पति बच्चा मामा तुम चाचा ऑल दोस्त ये सब देर ऑल ओनली वर्ड्स दट सॉल्व है नो वैल्यू only value is what to mere to mere chacha ne to mere kaam ke to meri patni ne to mere kaam ki ho jo bhi kaam wala bhi so this is how aham mama <laughs> is connected with each other so this mama it seems to be a glorified object in this world hmm? glorified emotion in this world but actually it is covering the the real asura uh, the a demon called aham so in this way when uh, somebody starts practicing this yoga that is gyana mishra bhakti yoga because you cannot have gyana independent of yoga what happens what is the first experience the first experience is aham mama will be destroyed so when this aham mama is destroyed uh, the next uh, point is kama loba divir malaihi uh, kama loba divir malaihi you can see that kama means desire loba that is uh, having more desire we know the difference between kama and loba kama means i want loba means i want more as simple as that <laughs> so better you have some uh, desire okay no problem desire fulfilled gun but this loba is more dangerous so you have somebody wanting something then uh, you fulfill that desire this person will go away but if you have some loba then what will happen you want more like uh, uh, somebody comes with a desire the best way to tackle that desire is it's a simple question uh, simple question is that Anything else you want? Is it okay? We'll be happy with this thing. तेरा सोच क्या हो? नहीं 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 और भी कुछ ही होगा. सुनते? हाँ. So whenever you have some desire in the mind, just you ask yourself a question. If this desire is fulfilled, now you will be like liberated soul. You will not require anything else. If that is the case even if you want 10000 crore rupees i'll give you but after that <laughs> no desire should be there you should not want anything because you want only one thing na people say bas ek dilado bachcha tells the papa 
मम्मी ये एक बस ये दिला और कुछ नहीं चाहिए हाँ अच्छा इज इट हाँ और कुछ नहीं चाहिए पक्का नहीं नहीं ऐसा <laughs> लिख के दो सो इवन दो डिजायर आर देर नो इट्स नॉट सच ए प्रॉब्लम बट लोभा इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट सो काम लोभा दिबिर मलई वीतम यदा मन शुद्धम अदुखम असुखम समम वीतम यदा मन शुद्धम विद माइंड बिकम्स फ्री फ्रॉम ऑल दीज थिंग्स वीत मीन्स टू गिव अप ऑल दीज थिंग्स अदुखम असुखम समम इन द स्टेट ऑफ ऑफ द स्टेट ऑफ ट्रांसेंडेंस देन वॉट हैपन्स अदुखम असुखम समम ही विल नॉट हैव एनी हैप्पीनेस नॉट डिस्ट्रेस and you'll see both happiness and distress on equal position this is the external uh, manifestation of self realization now when somebody advances more in yoga uh yoga rudah is yoga ruruksha and yoga rudah when comes to the platform of yoga rudah what are the symptoms that is described in this particular verse today's verse that is तदा पुष आत्मा केवल प्रकृते परम निरंतर स्वयं ज्योतिर्म अखंडित सो दट मीन हि हेज रियलाइज दट हि इज नाट दिस बाॉडी हि स्पिट सोल दट इन द योगा रूडा स्टेज एस्पेषली एट द लेवल ऑफ बेसे यम नियम आसन प्राणायाम प्रत्याहार धारण अन्वर्ड्स धारण ध्यान सामधि in these three states he is uh, almost understood that i am not this body hmm? that is tada purusha atmanam kevalam prakrute param he thinks himself as prakrute param transcendental to matter i am not this body he sees matter and he doesn't see the distinction in matter prakrute param he sees everything as earth water fire air ether Uh, mind intelligence and false ego and he sees matter doesn't matter hmm? he sees uh, uh, you make a nice wonderful rasgulla to him at that stage he sees a rasgulla and he sees not the rasgulla he sees there is earth water fire air ether in it he doesn't see it is sweet it is only some lump of some metal elements that's all you give karela to him and rasgulla to him he sees both of them the same that is the stage we has achieved because prakriti param uh, he is transcendental to the modes of nature prakriti param now not only he sees himself as prakriti param he also sees the nature of atma nature of the soul is two kinds any any description is of two kinds one is what it is not and what it is isn't it uh, like uh, you describe a person who he is not that is one description and uh, other description is what who he is both are required even krishna when he is described in the upanishads it is described who he is not neeti neeti he is not this he is not this he is not this that is why sankhya philosophy is there to know that how god is not earth god is not fire is not is not water is not this thing all these elements are counted and then say okay he is not this he is not this he is not this hmm? that is how you describe when the soul is also described in this way that is who what the soul is not and what the soul is now tada purusha atmanam kevalam prakrute param that means at the stage he understand that he is not matter that is the negative description of the soul but there should be some positive description of the soul what are the positive descriptions of so the soul that is nirantaram number 1 number 2 swayam jyoti number 3 animanam number 4 akhanditam these are the four um, uh, qualities of the soul which have been described in this particular verse so let us see the meaning of these uh, uh, four words and then what we understand by these words number 1 uh, word is nirantaram what is the meaning of the word nirantaram nirantaram means 
द वन हु इज बियॉन्ड ऑल द अपस्टिकल्स ऑफ दिस वर्ल्ड निरंतर मीन्स वॉट कॉन्स्टेंटली फ्लोइंग निरंतर बहता है isn't it? But in this world, every activity, whatever we want to do, there is an abstraction. Whereas uh, uh, in the spiritual world, there is no abstraction. Hmm? You want to go somewhere, there are so many obstacles. But dirantaram means which is freely flowing. Nobody can stop him. And is actually one of the names of Krishna. Mm -hmm. All these four actually belong to Krishna. These names or these designations. Though it is describing soul, it is actually a description of super soul only. And soul has the qualities of super soul. That is why this word nirantara has to be understood. That is one of the names of Krishna. Nirantara. Duranta. Duranta virya pane. Whether it is duranta or niranta, both are same. In the Upanishads, the super soul has been described by these words as nirantara or durantara. Like we have this duranto express. Why, why it's called duranto? Which never stops, but still it stops. <laughs> you had Delhi, Calcutta, duranto express. But it stops at many places. <laughs> they are named it durantara, but it's not duranto express. <laughs> huh? Name is Durantar, isn't it? Like in this world, you keep so many names which are actually not very befitting. <laughs> not very befitting. Shri Prabhupada used to say, Mother would keep the son's name as Kamal Lochan, but he is blind. <laughs> Out of affection, <laughs> you may keep so many names, but no names are actually befitting for us, for the, for the conditioned soul. Every name is only befitting Krishna. You name a name, you take a name, that is the name of Krishna. You tell a word, it is a name, it is describing Krishna. All the words which we use, or which we don't use also, which you all know, or not known to the Shabda Kosha, all are nothing but the descriptions of Krishna. There is a special philosophy which is spoken by Sri Padma Dvacharya. <coughs> vacha Vachika. Vacha Vachika. Means Vacha means every word. Uh, and uh, Vachika means every word. And it all refers to him, Vachika. Means who is that Krishna? There is only one person is described. So you take a name, you name a word or you take a word in your dictionary. Everything describes Krishna. Everything is actually name of Krishna. You have to understand how it is. So this word Nirantara is actually a name of Krishna because there is no question of stopping him. Hmm. He wants to achieve something, he will achieve because he is Satya Sankalpa and Satya Kama. So the yogi attains this quality of Nirantara. Same quality of Krishna. That is why the soul is Nirantara. To such an extent, our uh, Acharyas have described a liberated soul has almost all the qualities of Krishna, all the knowledge of Krishna, all the bliss of Krishna, except certain things. Especially the knowledge of creation, maintenance and destruction. This is the only thing which is not given to the soul. Almost, the soul when is on a liberated platform, almost like Krishna. That is why if somebody describes the soul as God, it is only because of their perception in the scriptures. They see that the soul has become almost God. He is not God, he is Amsha, but still happiness. Now I will give you a small example for it. Now you have an ocean. In the ocean, uh, you are there, taking, you are swimming in the ocean. So, though you are swimming in the ocean, the experience of the same kind of happiness in the ocean is the same as the ocean. Like for example, Krishna is the ocean of happiness. 
and you are drowned in the ocean of happiness now krishna whatever happiness he is experiencing you are also experiencing the same thing isn't it ha huh? like devotees are all happy and you just join in the ocean of happiness you also become the same similarly happy isn't it so in this way a liberated soul gets almost almost praya uh, the the qualities of krishna hmm? you may say there is a distinction in uh, the quantity but in the spiritual sense quantity has no much value isn't it quantity is what right? is it like krishna experiences 1000 kg of happiness you experience 1 kg of happiness it's like that or what because in spiritual world everything is absolute isn't it so nirantara hmm, the word which has been shri prabhupa translates this word uh, uh nirantara with this uh, thing that non different non different of similar quality the word nirantara is like that is how it has been discussed non different the li- the living entity the liberated soul becomes practically non different from krishna that is why in the upanishads you have a lot of description about how they are both same the jiva hmm, atma is as good as paramatma there is a description uh, because in the upanishads there are certain upanishads which are known as abheda shruti abheda shruti means the shrutis which talk about the non difference uh, and uh, some of the statements are like this aham brahmasmi uh, tattvamasi satyam gyanam anantam brahma hmm? sarvam kalvidam brahman these are the major four vakyas maha vakyas used by the brahmavadis or sometimes mayavadis to prove that jiva is the supreme lord hmm? that is how these are the and these are shrutis which are talking about uh, the oneness of the soul and the super soul they are known as abheda shruti but there are some shrutis some upanishads which talk about the bheda they are known as bheda shruti what is bheda shruti means what ah uh, the shrutis which talk about how there is a distinction between the supreme lord and the living entity hmm? what is the famous words which says nityo nityanam chetanas chetanam eko bahunam yo vidhadhati kaman so uh, and then there are some verses which talk about uh, there is one tree uh, in the tree there are two birds these are all what bheda shruti and there are some shruti which are known as ghataka shruti ghataka shruti means what which talk about oneness and difference <laughs> they talk about oneness and difference so that is why sometimes when devotees hear these classes by gaudiya vaishnava sometimes they think hey he is talking about mayavad isn't it <laughs> like when i told about uh, describing about this word nirantaram someone say hey you are talking mayavad <laughs> in the mind it comes <laughs> and on the other side oh no he yeah, no he is barabar <laughs> ultimately you are confused <laughs> what it is <laughs> in other words if you say what is ghataka shruti means confused shruti <laughs> no are why is it can why are you confusing <laughs> see if you do, if you are not confused ha huh? if you are not confused then you will think that i know everything <laughs> isn't it better you are confused you're always confused that is the nature of krishna consciousness that uh, krishna always confuses you Hmm. So when you are confused, then you are out of Maya. But when you think that I know, then you are in Maya, because you cannot know Krishna. You cannot know the soul. How many can? How many of you say that I know Krishna? No, you cannot. That is all. Upanishads say that uh, that Krishna cannot be known, but it is described in a very in a very interesting way. Hmm. Say. Yes, yeah, amatam, matam, matam, amatam. Yes, yeah, matam. One who says that I know, he amatam, he doesn't know. <laughs> One who says that amatam, I don't know Krishna, I cannot know him, then he knows. It's true. Why? Because Krishna is beyond. Avang mm, manago chara. He is beyond mind and senses. he is not it cannot be understood by our mind and senses 
he can only be understood by his revelation so nobody can claim that oh i know him in the same way soul also nobody can claim that i know the soul that is why the ghatakar shrutis are the most important shrutis because they explain that the soul is krishna as well as not krishna they talk about this achintya bheda abheda tatva achintya achintya khalu ye bhava na tarka tarkam sanyojet this achintya things which are beyond our uh, imagination beyond our mind and senses cannot be described this is what it is nobody can tell in the nirdharit way this is what it is so now somebody may say if the soul cannot be described uh, perfectly what it is then why are you describing it isn't it why are you describing so you are describing the soul to describe that it cannot be described <laughs> very famous verse in the bhagavad gita itself in the second chapter krishna says what does he say that aascharivat paschadi kaschidenam aascharivat patati tateva chanya shrutva apyenam vedana cheva kaschit somebody is describing being the soul as amazing and somebody describing the soul in amazement both the words both we are saying aascharivat paschati means somebody he is seeing the amazing soul and somebody is seeing the soul with amazement vadaditati vachanya somebody describes the soul he is so wonderful he is so amazing and somebody is describing the soul in amazement shrutva apyenam even though after hearing vedana cheva kaschid jasi shrutva api even though after hearing about the soul nobody understand the soul how do you understand this line krishna has described about the soul is it it and at the end what he says shrutva apyenam vedana cheva kaschid very interesting line in the entire section you know the real the meaning of this line is this if you hear the soul description of the soul from your spiritual master you will come to know the soul cannot be understood if you don't hear about the soul from the authorized source you can never understand the soul <laughs> i don't know why this verse came to me <laughs> maybe it is to confuse you i suppose <laughs> this is the only way you can make philosophy interesting <laughs> oh it is interesting <laughs> it is not it is not interesting but <laughs> okay <laughs> let's go to the next one after niran <laughs> nirantaram there is swayam jyoti now what is the meaning of swayam jyoti it's very interesting shila prabhupa says that this uh, the word uh, swayam jyoti atmanam in uh, animanam swayam jyoti so this word swayam jyoti has been uh, self effulgent self effulgent the soul emits a light called consciousness it emits a light called consciousness now for the soul to realize itself hmm, and i have to speak some upanishads what i can do to realize itself it doesn't require any other support it is swayam prakasha that is why even the knowledge about the soul cannot be understood by intelligence why because soul's nature is swayam jyoti swayam prakasha it reveals itself like krishna reveals himself ha huh? how is it described nayam atma pravachen labhya na medasha na bhuna shutena yam evaishya virunute tena labhya when krishna chooses a person to be revealed only to him krishna reveals himself but since the soul also has the nature of krishna the soul is self revealing 
you cannot say i can understand the soul by my microscope i can see i can understand by my intelligence no you cannot do that it is impossible the soul is self revealing so you go on meditating go on meditating you go on studying scriptures go on and all of a sudden you realize who you are divya gyan hride prakashitu it is revealed revelation it is not understood knowledge it is not that i know you cannot know the soul it is not that i see in the soul you cannot see it it shows itself it is self revealing it is a revelation it is not that i have seen the soul the soul souls itself to you like that it is swayam jyoti it is self revealing that has to be understood no knowledge especially spiritual knowledge <laughs> it is not understood by your intelligence even though you may try your best to use your intelligence to understand it cannot be understood it is only seva by seva it reveals uh, some people ask you know how to understand bhagavad gita you cannot understand bhagavad gita you do seva by reciting bhagavad gita you read the purports go on doing the seva and after some time a few years depending on your seva a revelation is there so the vedic system of gaining knowledge is not by study it is by abhyasa it is by seva that is why in the if you go to some uh, simple villages if you go and ask a mother where have you, where has your son gone she would not say he has gone to school she, he would not say he has gone to study she would say abhyas karne gaya abhyas this is a word nobody say padhne gaya <coughs> no padhne se gyan nahi milta abhyas abhyas means what repetition repetition now the modern concept of uh, of uh, study is what read read go through <laughs> glance through <laughs> glance okay just have a glance pehle uh, ratte the people used to do ratan uh, anything whether material or spiritual knowledge also go on repeating by repetition knowledge is revealed it is said that vina abhyasa vidya visham without repetition knowledge is visham so it is not how much you know how much depth you know and the depth comes how by repetition so when you say how much much means you are quantifying that means you have a materialistic ideology of spiritual subject matter how much about krishna you know how many verses you know that is not the subject how much is the depth you know and the depth comes by how how, how does it come it doesn't come by just uh, reading it comes by repetition repeat 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 so repetition is more important abhyasa yoga yukte na chetasa namya gamina Uh, of course many references can be given in the entire vedanta sutras at the end of the vedanta sutras what is the last aphorism of the vedanta sutra anavrutte shabdhat avrutti do repeat again you studied na then what to do repeat one devotee came and told me prabhu ji now bhagavad gita khatam ho gaya abhi kya karna hai you see bhagavad gita khatam ho gaya मैंने तुम खत्म हो गया भगवत तुम तुमने खत्म हुआ जैसी व्हाट काइंड ऑफ वर्ड्स वी यूज विथ तिलक कंटी माला सो लेट इज गो टू द नेक्स्ट वर्ड दैट इज अनिमानम अनिमानम like uh, uh, krishna also says in the bhagavad gita that uh, uh, sukshmatvat among the subtle things i am the jiva so uh, animana means uh, sukshma sukshma means the, the smallest of the smallest like the paramatma is been described in the upanishad as anuraniyam mahato mahiya so since paramatma is a uh, subtlest 
of the subtlest, smallest is the smallest, and the biggest is the biggest. Hmm? That is the nature of, uh, of, of Paramatma. So that is why the science, the scientists also want to find out the smallest is the smallest. And they also want to find the biggest is the biggest. These are only two subject matters of research. research. <laughs> to find out what is the smallest of the smallest. That is why they told a uh, molecule and then Dalton came and told an atom. Atoms, you know, this electron, proton, yeah, something else inside. They go on trying what is the uh, micrology. And they want to know the biggest of the biggest. What is this? Cosmology. And these are the two areas people are, con scientists are confused. <laughs> Other things they'll all tell. All, all wonderful, no problem. But when it comes to uh, the micrology and cosmology, in these two areas they are confused. Like if you tell a scientist, you go up and up and up and up and up. <laughs> what do you'll find? They'll say something, yeah, I'll find something. And now what about that? Gone. One, one, one line, one question is enough to destroy the entire uh, faith which people have in science. <laughs> Earlier I used to do, do a lot of uh, school programs, many years back. So generally these children were 5th, uh, 6th standard, uh, that, that, that age of imagination. And also they are in my faith schools, they are anti-Vedic, they have no faith. Then um, uh, I just asked uh, one question to them, beginning the beginning of the class only. See, I want your, all of you to imagine you go up and up and up. <laughs> up and up. <laughs> what will you find? <laughs> the whole class went on, some stars, galaxy. So any top, any covering? No, there will be covering. <laughs> Somebody told, there should be some, no, it should be like a, it's like a big ball. <laughs> because I saw in, in some picture, the universe is like a big, <laughs> this thing, ball. You'll find like, inside the ball, you go up. Then what is about that? Yeah, <laughs> what is about that? <laughs> Whole class went on like that. And told, I, you don't know, it's endless. They only told, it's endless. And how many of you see, feel that God is endless? Ah. Then I told, how many of you want to do another exercise? He told, yes, yes, we want another exercise of thought. He told, now you see what's inside. <laughs> what's inside it, what's inside it. You go to inside. <laughs> so that's Krishna. That's Krishna. See, see the scriptures are pratyakshavagam dharmyam susukam kartanovya. Pratyakshavagam. You can realize Krishna everywhere. You can. Because Krishna is everywhere. And he's entered Andantarastha Paramanu Chayantarastam. You can just examine. This is wood. Huh? And this is cloth. Both are made of earth, water, fire, air, ether. Why the difference in qualities? Wood has a particular quality. And chemistry talks about qualities of different elements. Where are these qualities coming from? It is because of Krishna's animanam. And the same quality of animanam is entering, is also, the soul also has it. And then the last word is akanditam. And what is the meaning of akanditam? It is not, it cannot be divided, it may not be fragmented. Soul cannot be fragmented, super soul cannot be also fragmented. Hmm. It is, it is not cleavable. Hmm? Prabhupada uses this word cleavable, fragment. Hmm? Where are these words coming from? What are the original Sanskrit words for it? Because they are, this is known as Parichedava. There is one uh, philosophy called Mayavad philosophy. There is one, of course, hundreds of Mayavad philosophies. It is not that Mayavad is only one. There is variety in Mayavad also. Huh? <laughs> 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 They're not one. <laughs> Anyhow, <laughs> so, so there is one philosophy called Parichedavad. There is Pratibhimbavad, Parichedavad, Rishti Shittivad, so many varieties are there. Brahma, uh, Brahma Parinamvad, so many Vads are there. So when it comes to explaining the distinction between the 
uh, no, ex explaining about how this world has manifested, especially jivas. So they use a uh, philosophy called Parichedavad. There is only one thing called Brahman, Brahma. And uh, when Maya, with its uh, avidya potency, affects Brahman fragmentally, that becomes Jiva. When uh, Brahman is affected by the vidya potency of Maya in whole, that becomes Ishwara. Ishwara means God, Rama, Narsimha, Vamana, all the demigods, everybody, they are all Ishwaras. And who are they? They are all in Sattvaguna. Because the vidya potency of Maya affected the Brahman completely and they are called Ishwara. When the avidya potency of Maya affects this Brahman in a fragmental way, then that becomes Jiva. So, when you remove the avidya from this Jiva, then Brahman. So, Maya was in nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> graphic, graphic, graphic way of describing Maya <laughs> Anyway, you don't have to know <laughs> because it's, you know, it's wrong. <laughs> So there is one more philosophy called Pratibhimbavad because the Upanishads clearly say Akhanditam. Uh, so they bring that this Khandan is actually unreal. Uh, of course then they are fed, fed up with that philosophy. No, no, no. It is only reflection. Pratibhimbavad it came. Like that uh, happens but the soul is Akhanditam. Uh, you go on uh, segregating the soul and you try to cut the soul, the soul cannot be cut into pieces. Nainam uh, chindanti shastrani. Why? Because the nature of the soul is what? Uh, what is the next verse? Nainam chindanti shastrani. Next verse. Next verse. Achedyoyam. Because it is achedyoyam, nainam chindanti shastrani. Akledyoyam. Because it is akledyoyam, it is? Na, na shoshayati marataha. Ah, like that. Achedyoyam, akledyoyam, adahyoyam. That is why it is. Nainan dhati pavaka, adahyoyam. Daha means. In this way, uh, the soul's uh, nature is uh, understood or realized by the yogi. So, four qualities of the soul we discussed. We stop here. Hare Krishna. एक एक दो क्योंकि साढ़े नौ बजे एक थोड़ा एक हाँ वी कैन टेक वन आर टू क्वेश्चन हरे कृष्ण पूजी थैंक यू सो मच इन सच एनालिटिकली अंडरस्टैंडिंग द मेकिंग अस अंडरस्टैंड द सब्जेक्ट मैटर पूजी माय क्वेश्चन इज लाइक नॉन फ्रैगमेंटेड का जो क्वालिटी है उसमें अगर हम देखें तो लाइक इफ वी डाइसेक्ट एवरीथिंग मतलब जैसे एक एलिमेंट है मतलब सबसे लोस लोअर मोस्ट है मॉलिक्यूल उसके अंदर एटम है एटम के अंदर इलेक्ट्रॉन है न्यूट्रॉन है सो फाइनली विल कम टू कृष्ण गॉड इन दैट मतलब बिकॉज अल्टीमेटली यस दैट इज वाई अंडांतरस्त परमाणु चयांतरस्थम इन द परमाणु ही इज देयर but the modern science understanding of atom compared to the atom which is described in the Upedas, even the atom of the Nyaya Vaisheshikas, the comparison is like this. A 20 floor building, an ant in front of it. So it is so sukshma. So the understanding of atom by the modern science is the gross understanding of atom. Anu, Trishanu, all these things come in, 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 this, uh, in this third canto. You have you studied that. Uh, calculations of the atom. That's very subtle. Uh, okay. okay. Last question. Yes. Uh, Hare Krishna Prabhu. Thank you Prabhu for wonderfully explaining this uh, philosophy. Uh, Prabhuji, my question is that uh, in uh, eighth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, there is a verse called Kavim Purana Manushasitaram Anoraniyam. 
So in that part, uh, part, part Srila Prabhupada mentions that super soul is so small, so small that it enters the heart of uh, soul. Uh, so is there any Upanishadic reference to this uh, statement or uh, I don't know where pr from where Prabhupada has quoted this? <coughs> it is said, where is Paramatma? Shikha yeva shat tasya madhye vavastitaha So you take this from here Rashwangli and the Nabi 10 is a place Nahata is a place where the Paramatma says, stays where in the form of a shikha, this is the shikha. The flame is like this, isn't it? The thumb shape, like this. Mm. So he is there in the heart of the living entity. So when you say heart, heart of the living entity, because uh, he doesn't stay in the material heart. So, Veda, when uh, something is described in the Puranas, it is described what is mentioned in the Veda is described in a very simple way. So, what are the four qualities? They are mentioned in the Upanishads. Uh, uh, in a more technical way, that's simple. Uh, Prithi, okay. just uh, one just ah. clarification. Is this Ashtang Yoga you were telling? It is the same of Patanjali Yoga Sutra or something else? There is a difference between Patanjali Ashtanga and Krishna's Ashtanga. Then difference between Jaimini's karma and Krishna's karma yoga. There is a difference between Kapila's, atheistic Kapila's Sankhya and Krishna's Sankhya. And there is a difference between Krishna's Sankhya and Kapila's Sankhya. Okay, we stop here. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna. Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Shri Madhu Bhagavatam ki jai, Shri Lo Prabhupad ki jai, Shri Es Kamalochan Prabhu ji ki jai. So Prabhu ji ko hamre dhanya madhena chahenge by chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Prabhu ji aur questions lene ke liye tayar thali ki Prabhu ji ka meeting abhi 9:30, so that's why we have to stop the class here. But we are so very grateful to Prabhu ji. Thank you so much, Prabhu ji. Hare Krishna, Prabhu ji. Krishna Prasadam Ki Jai.